Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to talk about my PNG application experience and pretty much what I wish I knew. So as you can tell from my thumbnail, I didn't get it when I applied for it and there are things that I missed and I wish that I was informed before I applied. So hopefully this video will help those to prevent making the same mistakes as I did. So for those who are watching, you are probably pretty familiar with what a PNG is. And for those who are not really familiar, it is just a professional engineering designation. And it is for people to be able to um, work in an engineering job and practice engineering in the province that it was granted. However, a lot of people are already doing engineering jobs without um, this license, so it's not really something that is needed. Basically what it is though, it is pretty much a stamp that you get and if you stamp that with your name on a project, it means that you are responsible for anything that happens to that project. So if a bridge collapsed and killed like 20 people, then you are responsible for killing 20 people because they have your name on it. It doesn't look like it's something that is that great to get, right? So. So when I was working as um, a co-op student in a nuclear plant, I was under a supervisor who is really qualified to get his PNG, but he told me that he didn't get it because he didn't want to be responsible um, for anything that goes wrong in a nuclear plant, which makes sense because who would want to be responsible for that? And since he was in such a higher up position, I think the risk for him is a lot um, higher if he does get that designation. So if something does happen, he would be pretty much responsible. And working in a nuclear plant, I mean, that is a pretty high risk job. So let's go over what are the requirements to get your PNG. So you must be at least 18 years old. You must be of good character. You must meet the academic requirement and you must pass the national professional practice exam and also satisfy the experience requirements. So this is the order that they give you on their website. And so basically if you meet one, you can go on to the next. So when you do apply for it, they do make sure that you finish writing your exam and then go on to the next stage, which is the academic experience. So basically for me, 18 years or older, yes, check mark. Be of good character, yes, check mark. Um, meet the academic requirements. So what are the academic requirements? You must hold a bachelor degree from an engineering program and the engineering program must be accredited. And so I studied from McMaster University, so that is an accredited engineering program. So check mark for that one as well. So after that, I have to pass the exam. So. I paid 265 to write this exam and I passed it. And then the next part is to pretty much verify my engineering experience. So for your engineering experience, you must have four years of engineering experience and you must have at least one year practice under a supervisor who have his PN. So I pretty much worked four years under my manager who has his PN and um, he helped sign off all my papers as well. So what went wrong? <laughs> Why didn't they give it to me? So let's go over to engineering work experience on their website. So if you look at their website, um, the PO evaluates the applicant's engineering experience against five quality based criteria, application of theory, practical experience, management of engineering, communication skills, and awareness of social implications of engineering. So. I pretty much filled out all of this form. And let me tell you, filling out all of this takes a lot of time because I could be writing like a 12 page document on this based on my experiences, which my manager approved of. So I filled out all of these documents and I sent it in and they got back to me and say that I had to talk about how my current job relates to my background. So I studied chemical and bioengineering and I'm working as a product engineer. So it doesn't really match with my background all that much. And that was when I realized, oh crap, I actually didn't know about this requirement. And I searched online and on the website, it doesn't mention anything about this 
and they didn't make it clear. So I was actually kind of confused. I didn't know about the step. I tried to make my current job related to chemical engineering. For my current job, I actually don't really do chemical engineering related stuff. Um, this job is mostly for mechanical and electrical engineers. I'm actually the only chemical engineering person on my team. So it was really hard for me to kind of relate this back to my educational background. So my current job, I review some test reports that are related to chemicals. So I reviewed chemical test reports, but not really, but, but that stuff isn't really chemical engineering. And for those who did study chemical engineering, they will know that it has actually very little percentage of it is related to chemicals. Cause most of the time you're talking about reactors and reactor designs and, um, none of that is chemistry. So they got back to me and told me that I had to pretty much relate it to my educational background. So I kind of fixed it up a little bit and talked about the test reports, but um, they rejected me again and told me that it still isn't really chemical engineering. So they told me to go in for an um, interview with um, three chemical engineers to kind of review my experience. And so I went, I went and I prepared my document on what I do at my current job. And when I went in, I was actually surprised that they didn't even want to look at it. I knew something was off to a bad start when I sat down and I said, okay, I prepared a presentation on what I did. And one of the guys said, first off, I speak. And then I knew it was already over. And after that, it was just downhill from there. That whole entire interview process was probably the worst I have ever been in. It was even harder than an actual job interview because they were not even asking about what I do at work, but they were asking me textbook questions um, like thermodynamics, um, reactor designs, things where you actually have to study from a textbook to be able to answer these questions. So these are stuff that I haven't even done five years ago. Like these are questions that I probably had to do an exam in um, when I was still in school. So when you're actually working, um, you know, engineers out there, when you're working, you're not really using these theories that you learn in class, but they were actually asking me these questions and I was really taken aback. They were also very rude about it and I, ended up crying because it was just so traumatizing. They made me feel like, oh, why are you even here? Like, how are you even an engineer? Um, so I pretty much wasted all my time writing these like 12 pages of um, documents about what I do in my job, preparing a presentation to go to this. And they didn't even look at it. And it just felt like such a waste of time. I also wrote my practice. Um, I, I also wrote my exam and they took my money and none of it on the website like nowhere did mention that I have to match my educational background and they were just not clear on yeah so then I talked to some of my um, classmates who did get their PNG because they work in a chemical engineering related job and I asked them how what their application process was like and they said they approved them pretty easily and I asked them the questions that these guys had asked me in the, inter in the interview and I asked if they would have known these questions and they all said no, like those are really tough questions that you would have to study before going in to answer. And they said that they don't even use any of that in a job. So why did they even ask me these questions at the interview? It was just so weird. Another thing that also kind of bothered me a bit was that um, to a lot of the people that I work with, some of them got their PNG and we work in the same field. So we apply the same engineering principles and stuff, but I can't get it because of my background. So, but they still got it and we're doing the same job. So it just really kind of shows you how useless this PNG is. <laughs> um, and also I know somebody who got it um, working as my current job, but then later he switched jobs to something that is completely unrelated um, to engineering doing more coding now and he still gets to keep his license so you know if you are switching jobs you don't really reevaluate it so in the end it's almost like why does it matter so much for 
me to have my educational educations match if people who got it can switch careers and still keep their license. So it was just kind of a really weird organization that just doesn't make sense to me. You know, I think it does matter for things like uh, civil engineers because they are building like high risk products like bridges and buildings. And I think for that, you do really need to be held responsible. So for that, it does make sense that their educational background will match their um, work experience and what they're doing. So with that, I can see how that would be more relevant. And but for other jobs, I just don't really know why it really matters because you know um engineering in general you can work in a wide range of jobs and one thing that i would change is also having them verify your experience before making you take the png exam because it's just a complete waste of my money and also time that i will now never get back so after I went through all this experience, I went online to figure out if how other people's experiences were like as well. And to my surprise, they were also, they also experienced the same thing. You know, they brought them to the panel to have an in-person interview and they asked them all these textbook really questions that they were in. There was no way for them to answer these questions because that's a little bit ridiculous. Um, and they were also treated pretty poorly by the interviewers. So I guess it's just a common thing. It's just what they do. So that is pretty much my experience with this whole PNG application process. Um, if you have gone through it yourself, let me know how it went for you and if it was easy for you, if you found the designation was useful to you or not, I would love to know. Thanks for watching!